a radical Iranian regime armed with nuclear weapons could bring an end to the era of nuclear peace that the world has enjoyed for the last 65 years. Such a regime could provide nuclear weapons to terrorists. It might even be tempted to use them. And our world would never be the same. Iran's brazen bid to develop nuclear weapons is certainly first and foremost a threat to my country, to Israel. But it's a threat to the entire region. It's a threat to the entire world. Israel thus expects the international community to act swiftly and to act decisively to thwart this danger. But we always reserve the right of self-defense. And my friends, we have to defend ourselves also against lies and against vilification. Throughout history, throughout our history, the slanders against the Jewish people always preceded physical attacks against us. In fact, they were used to justify those attacks. The Jews were called the well poisoners of mankind, the fomenters of instability, the source of all evil under the sun. Unfortunately, as in the case of the physical attacks, these libelous attacks against the Jews did not stop with the creation of the State of Israel. It's true that for a time, overt anti-Semitism was held in check by the, by the shame and the shock of the Holocaust, but only for a time. In recent decades, the hatred of the Jews has reemerged with increasing force, but with an insidious twist. It is not merely directed at the Jewish people. It's increasingly directed at the Jewish state. And in its most pernicious form, it argues that if only Israel did not exist, many of the world's problems would go away. Now, I want to be clear. This doesn't mean that Israel is above criticism. Of course not. Israel, like any democracy, has its imperfections. But we strive to correct them through open debate and through scrutiny. Israel has independent courts, the rule of law, a free press, and a vigorous parliamentary debate. Believe me, it's very vigorous. Well, you've just, through, you've just gone through a week of uh, health care voting. In Israel, every week is health care week. It doesn't stop. And I know that in this city, members of Congress refer to each other uh, as my distinguished colleague from Wisconsin, the distinguished senator from California. In Israel, members of Knesset don't speak of their distinguished colleagues from Be'er Sheva or Kiyat Shmona. We say, well, you don't know, well, you don't want to know what we say. <laughs> because in Israel, self-criticism is a way of life. And we also accept that criticism is part and parcel of the conduct of international affairs. But Israel should be judged by the same standards applied to other nations and to other democracies. Sometimes I think there's a Sometimes I think there's a triple standard. One standard for the dictatorships, a second standard for the democracies, and a third standard is a standard for Israel. We should be judged by one standard. And allegations made against the State of Israel must be grounded in fact.
One allegation that is not grounded in fact is the attempt to describe the Jews as foreign colonialists in their own homeland. This is, this is one of the great lies of modern times. In my office, I have a signet ring that was loaned to me by Israel's Department of Antiquities. This ring was found right next to the Western Wall, but it dates back 2,800 years ago, 200 years after King David declared Jerusalem as our people's capital. Now, this ring is a seal of a Jewish official, and his name is inscribed in it, on it, in Hebrew. The name is Netanyahu, Netanyahu ben Yoash. Now that's my last name. My first name, Benjamin, dates back a thousand years earlier to Benjamin, the son of Jacob. One of Jake, Benjamin's brothers was named Shimon, which also happens to be the name of my good friend Shimon Peres, the president of Israel. You see, nearly 4,000 years ago, Benjamin, Shimon, and their ten brothers roamed the hills of Judea. Ladies and gentlemen, the connection between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be denied. The connection between the Jewish people and Jerusalem cannot be denied. The Jewish people were building Jerusalem 3,000 years ago, and the Jewish people are building Jerusalem today. Jerusalem is not a settlement, it's our capital.